We're gonna go into strength training for table tennis and we're gonna start right now. So recently there was a study that table tennis actually has the most brain activity out of all freaking sports, which makes sense to me. If you look at how quickly the game is, and a lot of people will say curling is the fastest sport on earth. A lot of people will say that, Irish people especially, right? But I think I would challenge that only because table tennis tends to be happening faster in a repetitive action. You know, hurling for sure happens at very, very high speeds, but it's over a much greater field. And that's a big concept here is that when we're looking at strength and conditioning and when we're looking at sports performance for table tennis, we have to think about the actual area that is competitive. Now, another big factor is that if we can increase that area based off of our coverage, okay, if we can be faster, cover more ground, jump a little bit higher, now that makes it easier per se to be more competitive. You can set up better shots or more strategic shots as long as you're playing someone of the equal skill level. And so I think that's the first big aspect. I would just wanna talk about the first key factor in strength training for table tennis is that we cannot have a negative impact on skill. It can't happen, okay? so if I'm I'm gonna train a table tennis athlete to move laterally very fast, to have great mobility in their shoulder, to be able to be as explosive as possible. The training that we are going to do, this is the first key factor, cannot have any negative impact. And that even means to the point where we've gotta to try to avoid soreness as much as possible. It's still gonna happen with resistance-based training. It's still gonna happen in certain other scenarios, but we have to avoid any skill inhibition. So all of our training or most of our training should be related to the other key factors, okay? So the next key factor is that we have to have some endurance. These games can be fairly long lasting. They can be extremely intense. There's also a very large amount of pressure. So if we can do some simple endurance based work, we can do once a week, maybe a high intensity work or maybe some sprint interval training, 15 to 20 minutes, nothing that's gonna impact our speed and our agility negatively, but something that's gonna help keep our endurance at a higher level. And then as we get more advanced in the sport of table tennis, what I would do is I would take these athletes and I would say, okay, let's get under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. Okay, so we're doing a sprint interval workout. Let's say we're doing some type of Tabata or let, that would be more high intensity interval. Let's say that we're doing 10 seconds as hard as possible and then we rest for 40 to 60 seconds during that time frame let's say we do that for 12 to 15 minutes during that time frame i would challenge the athlete to solve equations of let's say math or answer questions or even do simple skill work at that fatigue state to keep their brain as primed as possible when they're under a large amount of stress because then we can start to cue them on how to recover inside of that strength training situation. We can cue them on their breath, we can cue them on their focus, we can cue them on their visualization. And then in turn, the whole goal is that anything that we're doing in the realm of sports performance and strength and conditioning is geared towards making them a better table tennis player. That's it, that's the whole goal. So we need to focus on endurance. I would use sprint interval training, high intensity interval training, and then maybe once a week, 45 minutes on a salt bike, nice and easy, get the elevated heart rate. And while that's happening, uh, they're doing some learning process to make sure that we're stimulating their brain and they're trying to stay as calm as possible during that endurance scenario to optimize that transfer over to their sport. Now that third key aspect, we wanna train them to be the most explosive, twitchy athletes on the planet. That will be hard to do outside of gymnastics and uh, weightlifting and shot putters. But one thing that we can do is make sure that we're maximizing strength training with calisthenics, okay? Make sure that we're maximizing anything that's gonna improve relative strength. Make sure that we're maximizing the use of plyometrics, okay? And I wanna start with an athlete where they can show that they've demonstrated the aspect of calisthenics and then build into some simple plyometrics and then use our 5S protocol, okay? So we can implement our 5S protocol 
overall. And really, as they advance through their training, they will start to be more sports specific scenarios that we're gonna use that are plyometric based. So we like to use specific plyometric series that will transfer over to the sporting realm of the individual athlete. So we might look at a lacrosse player and give them specific series of plyometrics and then compare that to a wrestler and they will have a different series of plyometrics that are very sports specific and then come back and we can start to think about that table tennis player and really break down footage, really look at the best of all time and start to see what's happening with their paddle, what's happening with their foot placement, what position is their ankle in, how are they cutting, how are they jumping, are they jumping off two feet, are they jumping off of one foot, a specific player, are they weak off of two feet, are they weak off of one foot, do they have a bad backhand, do they have a great backhand, and we can start to analyze these things specific to the player and then we can use that to educate ourselves to improve that explosiveness through these plyometric series that will transfer at a very very high degree to that sports specificity of table tennis so that's how we're going to use that third key factor of improving overall explosiveness and also there will be a point that we might use like a dumbbell snatch or a power snatch we might use a power clean or a full clean these are exercises that will not make someone super super hypertrophic but instead it will actually help with their dynamic trunk control it will actually help with their ability to learn technique it will actually help with shoulder stability and that's some other key factors here is that if we can focus on that trunk control okay this is sort of like the back end part of the explosive training if we can focus on trunk control now when that individual is moving very rapidly they can have a greater quiet eye so quiet eye plays a major role in skill development of table tennis so if we can enhance the quiet eye through greater dynamic trunk control by doing the right plyometrics we can improve their explosiveness and also make sure that we can optimize their overall skill development and then we can backdoor that with more endurance or a little bit of endurance to help improve how they're handling stress when they're fatigued and then finally that brings us to the last key aspect this last key aspect is going to be based around prevention and i believe that there should be some standard traditional resistance-based training exercises think like a dumbbell bench or a miracle grow pull up some forearm work anything that we can do to strengthen the forearm to make sure our elbow is stable to lengthen the lats to lengthen and improve our shoulder mobility anything that we can do to really target those key joints improve our wrist ability to rotate, any way that we can improve deviation. These are really key aspects that I think we should be looking at as someone who would train a table tennis player and say, look, prevention of injury will require some traditional resistance-based training movements. That would be done at least once a week. Don't need to focus on crazy, crazy hypertrophy drop sets. We don't need to focus on anything that's gonna make somebody super, super hypertrophic, but we need to focus on things that will increase stability. And if we can go back to the beginning, we need to make sure that that injury prevention is done in the realm of not inhibiting their skill development. Then we can bring in some of that endurance work. We have sports specific plyometric and explosive work that we work through that 5S protocol. When we develop their explosiveness through that 5S protocol, that's gonna help us then see where they need to work on some specific injury prevention. Ultimately, these are all things that you have to do to increase the physical capability of a table tennis player because we know the brain function is gonna be off the charts. So we also need to make sure that the physicality of the athlete is off the charts relative to table tennis. So use all four of these concepts. And if you guys need help with your programming, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, download Peak Strength and get in. And you can click on, let's say you wanna improve for table tennis. You could look at table tennis, you can look at badminton, you can look at something like baseball even. Those are programs that will transfer phenomenally over to that realm of table tennis. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.